Well, good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? Come on, students. You got about two more weeks of school. Parents, weeping and gnashing of teeth may commence. We are so glad you guys are here worshiping with us today. Welcome home, everybody. If this is your first or second time or you've been kicking the tires here for quite a while, we want to say welcome back. Welcome home. We have so many families that are moving into the area with job transfers, with uh, they just love the area because they've got great taste. We love where we live up here in North Georgia. It's, it is, it's God's country. We are spoiled rotten. And, and we, we know that you could have, you could have phoned, phoned it in and, and, and um, you know, really just chosen so many other beautiful options, but you chose the presence of God. And I am so thankful for that because God's going to honor that. God's going to meet you right at the point of your faith. And uh, aren't y'all thankful for a spirit of worship that is here this morning already? This, we still believe that God is moving. We still believe that God does miracles. We still believe that God sets people free. He makes all things new. Man, it, it, he's still doing it in our midst. Well, hey, I want to say a big welcome home to everyone that's joining us online as well. If we haven't met, my name is Hal, and I have the honor of, of being the pastor here at Highlands Church. We planted this 15 and a half years ago, and God is still moving. He is still moving. And, and um, I, I, I want to encourage you, if you did not check out last week's message, if you, if you missed it, um, Sandra, my wife, shared on Mother's Day, talked about what do you do when you're in a season of waiting? I mean, what a, what a powerful, powerful uh, message that was. I encourage you to go back there and listen to that. Check that out. I, I, I'm, I'm, I left there going, all right, God, this is what's up. It, was, it challenged my faith. Um, we're going to pick right back up in the message series called This Is Us. And this message series is to help you, to introduce you to our church, our vision, our values, where we've been, where we're going. And what we wanted to do is, is we want to honor where we've been, but we walk into faith into what's to come. And I, we, we have an open prayer time every Wednesday at, at noon here in the auditorium. It's not just for staff, it's for anyone. Yeah? I mean, if, you're, if you're in the area, if you've got some time off of lunch, scoot over here and pray with us. And, and we, we were doing that this past Wednesday. And guys, I, um, I was minding my own business and God, God downloaded something in my heart. And I say this with fear and trembling, the Lord said, I believe that God still speaks. How about you? Minding my own business, praying for you and your crazy kids <laughs> and my crazy kids. I'm just, I'm just praying. God bless my family. I protect my family and guard our steps and pray. Minding my own business and God spoke to my heart. It wasn't an audible voice, but it was just a download. And it was so clear and I don't, listen, I, I don't do this every Sunday. Come on now. But I, I'm excited to share with you what the Lord whispered to me. And it's not, I'm not going to preach a message about it. But I, I do want to honor the voice of the Lord. And I do want to carve out just a moment to say, let me share with you what God has in store for us as a church. Are you ready? Oh, come on. Are y'all ready? Come on. Come on. Come on now. The Lord downloaded in my heart and it, he said, you are entering an era of unmerited favor. You will live in houses you did not build and you will drink from wells you did not dig. And I got excited. You know why? Not for an organization or a 501C. I got excited for you because that's what God is speaking to your families. It's not me, it's our family, the spiritual family of Highlands and God's unmerited faith. Well, see, this is what I, I say. God, I, I kind of argue with the Lord. Have you ever talked back with God? I said, you mean a season of unmerited? Because I, I started reasoning and filling in the gaps and it was, it was a correction. No, an era. And I'm like, I don't, when's the last time you said era? I don't say era. We use season probably once a week, you know, an era. And are you, are you ready? I'm like, all right, Lord. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that sharp. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I did graduate. I'm going to brag on God, brag on me. I graduated from the top 10% of what? The bottom one third of my class. So I want to read to you. This is what God's saying over you. 
an era of unmerited favor. Now, an era is different than a season. Seasons come and go. We are entering the summer season, right? We enjoy that three weeks of spring here in Georgia. And here comes 90 degree weather. But this is what an era looks like. A long and distinct period of history with a, with a particular feature or characteristic. A long season, right? A long moment, a long, that's marked by a characteristic. What is that characteristic? Favor, an unmerited favor. And so I, I'm like, Lord, I, I'm gonna share that with our church. I hope they get excited as I'm getting excited because if you don't want yours, I'll take yours too. I'm greedy like that spiritually. If you don't want your blessing, Lord, they don't care. I'll take theirs too. Okay? And don't, never judge someone's harvest because you don't know their seed. All right? So I'm minding my own business. Now, look, I'm a grown man. And my, my mom still texts me every Sunday morning. Let, let me know she's praying for me and praying for you. Come on now. My mom and dad helped us plant this church 15 and a half years ago. She's, she, she, she prays for us. She's watching us online right now. She and my dad. All right? Now watch this. She says, I, I'm, I'm praying for you this morning and, and this, this some blessings. And then she says, you're walking in due season. She, I did not share with her that word. She's like, it's time. Like, so I, are we entering? Like, are we, are we about to be that? No, no, no. God says, you are entering due season, an era, a long period of unmerited favor. Come on. Yes, God. And so when God speaks, we thank him for that. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, today, we thank you for the word of the Lord. It's weighty. It's not paper plates. It's fine china. We don't treat it flippantly. You have spoken, God. And we're thankful. We're grateful to think that we get to live in this umbrella of your goodness of unmerited favor. And it's not just lasting long enough for a season, but we're living in due season. We're entering it now, an era, a long time. So God, right now, thank you for blessing our families. But God, we know why we're blessed here at Highlands Church. We're blessed to be a blessing. And we know where our help comes from. We know who is Jehovah Jireh, the God who's more than enough. Not just enough, but more than enough. So Lord, the word that you gave us, we hold it close to our hearts. And we'll walk worthy of that calling. We know we're blessed to be a blessing. We love you, God. We pray today that people would come alive, that people would come to repentance, and come back to you. Matter of fact, I don't normally do this, but God is, is leading me to go a different direction this morning. If you're here right now and you say, I feel so far from God. See, we usually do this at the end of the message, but God's saying now, right now. You feel, man, I feel so far from God. And I find myself in church of all places. But I feel like God's like, come home, come closer, come back. I miss you. I want to walk with you. I want to know you. Let's do life. Maybe he's saying to you, let's do this again. I know you've tripped up, but I'm not mad at you. I'm calling you back. If you're here today, you say, pastor, that's me. That's me on the count of three. I want you to slip your hands up, slip it right back down. I'm not going to call you up. I just want to pray a general prayer over you right now, over the crowd. If you say, Pastor, that's me on the count of three. One, two, three. Please pray for me today. I'm coming home. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? Come on. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Well, Father, you saw the hands. You saw the hearts. <laughs> Thank you for interrupting our church service. <laughs> We're so grateful. Thank you for loving your people. Today, we repent from going our own way. And today, we come home.
We come back to you. Jesus, forgive us. Jesus, Jesus, save us. Jesus, we put our hope and our faith and our trust in you. Holy Spirit, fill us. We don't want to go home the way that we came. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Everyone look at me. Hey, welcome home, everybody. Presence of God is here. Come on, presence of God is here. Woo! That's not at all what I was going to preach, so come on, put your seatbelts on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You know, I, um, um, we're going to jump, jump right in, and, and, and thank God that we're not so stuck with, well, uh, an order in a service, and you've got to do it this way. Hey, listen, we're going to follow God. If the cloud's moving, just follow the cloud. Come on now. And people's hands went up, say yes to Jesus. Come on. This is exciting, right? All right. This, this is us. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, write the vision. Write it, write it very cl- uh, plainly. Write it clearly on the clay tablets for whoever reads it can run to tell uh, others. Vision. Why, why do I, oh, I say vision? Well, Vision, maybe you're new here. We want to introduce you to our vision. But, but guess what? Vision leaks and culture drifts in a church, in an organization, even in a home, a family. So we're, re, we're retelling. This is the vision. This is where we're going. We, will, we, we help people to do what? Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and, and make a difference. Let's say that together. Come on. We help people to know God, know God find freedom, discover purpose, and... And this is what discipleship looks like. It's to people to have a knowing of God, not a, a head knowledge, but a relationship, a real relationship with the Father. And God says, look, and, and I, now that I know you, I want to set you free of your yesterdays, right? And then, 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 then I want to introduce you to the very reason that I put you on the earth like, I, I've wired you for something to make an eternal impact in the life of others. And then I'm going to put you in a group of people that are making an eternal difference. So, so know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Uh, let me, it, there, it's not on the screens, but the, the values of our church, if you're new around here, or if you've forgotten them, is we, we love God. Come on, it's all about God. Come on. So thankful of, 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 for, for, the, for the Lord. We love people. Don't you love prayer? Yeah, because we love God. We talk to God. We love people. You mean, what kind of people? People. Come on, everybody. Thank you for that big amen right there, or lack thereof. We love everybody, right? Because Jesus loves some, uh, everyone so much that he what? He laid down his life. And then we do this. We, we, we serve with excellence. Excellence marks our church. And can I just go on, on record to say that I see the stained carpet in the, in the lobby. Okay, this has kept me up for nights on end. We had a, a scissor lift that, from a company that we, we, we uh, rented from. And battery acid trickled all over our gorgeous carpet in the lobby. Y'all smile at me. I'm smiling. <laughs> And, and ate it right through to the carpet. You know what, it's what, what, what excited me? Not about the acid stain and the fact that we got to get new carpet. They're paying for it. But anyway, um, come on, amen in the house of God. You can't fix stupid. That wasn't on us. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, anyway, um, uh, the, the, the ushers, I think it was last weekend, they got around and they were all looking at it going, okay, do we need to clean this up? This isn't right. This isn't, why? Because... We, our culture here, if it ain't quite, it ain't right. Because excellence, it honors God and inspires people, right? So, so they're looking around. I'm like, guys, you can't clean that up. That is concrete slab right through there. It just melted it. And we all had a, a moment of grief. Anyway, so last, the last value we have is we choose joy because joy is not a feeling. It's a choice. A lot of people waiting on, they're waiting on a feeling. You're going to be waiting a while. You might as well wake up every day and say, you know what? Today, I choose joy. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and, and be glad in it. So back, back in the day, back in college, back in my, my single days, um, you know, I was, I was, we were all looking for a spouse, right? We were kept, had our eyes open, eyes wide open. And how many of you know you don't marry, you don't just marry cute, you, you, you don't just marry cute. Yes, they better be beautiful. But watch this. Um, you, you don't marry a personality. You marry a character. Y'all don't get that. Young people, listen. You marry character. 
okay? And I found someone cute with character. Thank you, Jesus. And when, when I, 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 yes, I, I, I pursued her. I was in hot pursuit. She said she pursued me. I just, I just found myself always hanging out at the girl's dorm. The Lord just kept leading me over to Sandra's dorm, you know? And, uh, and, and, and but what, what attracted me was, yes, she's beautiful. Yes, she's smart, double major, unlike me. And so I, I graduated, thank you, Lordy, not, you know, Kuma, Kuma Lordy. So, so, um, uh, but here, listen to me. What young people, this is what intrigued me about Sandra. It was a characteristic is she, she knew God and she knew what God had called her to do. And it didn't matter how cute that I was with hair back then. I was not going to distract her from the call of God on her life. And she didn't, she didn't have it all figured out because no one does when, when we were that young um, even today, I feel like I just know enough to get out of the rain some days, right? But, but Son, this, is, this is one thing I, I admired about Sandra, and I still do. Sandra would not compromise one bit. Her standards for any, for, on anything for anyone. And today, I want to introduce you to, to our church. And, and I, I, I didn't just come to share vision and values. I, I wanted today, I want to share... One of the words that best describes our church, and we as leaders are not willing to compromise this characteristic for anything or anyone. And here's the, here's the, 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 the descriptive word about our church. is Highlands Church is radically generous. Radically generous. We're, we're, we were generous when we were portable 15 years ago in a school. What does portable mean? That we set up and we tore down every Sunday in an in a elementary school cafetorium, which is a fancy word for cafeteria that we had to run pipe and drape in and, and sit in uncomfortable little chairs. It was, it was awful. But you know what? God honored the fact that we would always honor him with our generosity. Listen what the Lord does with generous people. And when you read this, look at, look at how this describes our, our church. In Psalm 112, the Bible says, good will come to him or her who is generous and lends freely. So God wants us to learn how to give our life away. Who conducts his affairs with justice. King David speaks of being intentional with the way that we live. Surely he will never be shaken. Whew, come on now. Generous people will never be shaken. Now, watch the, the Bible does not say that shaking will not happen. It says that you will not be shaken. Hey, guess what? The whole world was shaken for the last 24 months, but we were not, it, we were not shaken. Come on. And he says this, a righteous man will be remembered forever. So godly, generate, jo godly generosity is not just transactional. Godly generosity is legacy-minded. After we are long gone, hey, listen, I pray that Jesus comes back in my, in my generation. I'm living for it. I'm planning for it. I'm praying for it. But if, if Jesus, Terry, I'm long gone, the church will still be here. You know what? And I know that you'll mourn for months on end after I die. Here, here, you want to know the truth? You'll mourn for about two hours, and then that afternoon, you're going to say, what do y'all want for lunch? And that's okay, as long as Jesus is remembered, as long as the presence of God is honored. It's, it's legacy. So from day one, our church, um, and I want you to relax. This is not a, a, a money message. I, I mean, I think I forgot the offering. We forgot even mentioning the offering. I can't tell you how many times. I'm really bad at it, guys. I, 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 we, we, someone will say, you know, you didn't even mention the offering. I'm like, yeah, I just talked to them. I thanked them for being generous. And then we, we just went on our way. Why? Because the generosity is not about a giving moment. The generosity is about a mindset. It's not a little sermonette in the middle of a sermon series. It's a way that we live. It's the way that we love our church, the love, way that we love our community, right? From day one, our church we decided that we'd be known for our generosity in that, that even when we had just a little bit of money, that 
at least 10% of it, because we believe in the tithe, which means a 10th portion, should be returned to the Lord. And this church gives away to missions, local, national, international missions, gives it away, never less than 10%, always above 10% every single year to missions. Why? Because we believe in being generous. Here are two quick reasons, all right? The first one is this. Write this down, because we're just passing through this life. We're, 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 you think you, you're an owner? The truth is, you're just a renter. We're just, we're just passing through. Heaven is our home. Earth is not our home. We are not earthly beings who are having a spiritual experience on a Sunday morning. We are spirit beings who are having this temporary earth experience over our lifetime. That's it. We are three-part beings. We are a spirit. We don't have a spirit. We are a spirit. We have a mind, mind, will, and emotions, a soul, all right? And then we live in a physical body. And when, when this thing ceases to function anymore, guess what? We just step over as Christians. As Christ followers, we don't die. We just step over. We, tra- we transition. Notice what the Apostle Paul said when he was in prison. Are y'all still glad you came? To- all right. Philippians chapter 3. Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction and their God is their stomach. What does that mean? It doesn't mean they eat a lot. It means that indulgence is their normal. And their glory is in their shame. Then Paul tells them why they're enemies of the cross. Here's why. It's because their mind is on earthly things. You think that this is all about this. Your focus, your, your, your living as if earth is, is your reward. No, 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 no. Our citizenship is in where? It's in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're just passing through. Look at your neighbor and say, we're just passing through. Okay, here's the other reason. The other reason is this. It's because there's limited time. There's limited time. We're just passing through. And, and there's limited time. All of us have a clock that's ticking. So for some of us, huh, for some of us, there, there's, you have more time behind you than you have in front of you. And I'm not being morbid. It, it is what it is. It is the cycle of life. I had the pleasure of, of spending Friday night with my mom and my dad and my brother and his beautiful family, my kids. And, and he, said, he says this, um, we were talking and, and then my, 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 my dad's sister and my uncle, uh, they were with us and I hadn't seen them for years. And then, come on, and then my, the, the, the matriarch of the family, Nana, my dad's mom, 95 years old. 95 years. Man, you have done something when you turn 95. You can say something and we are like, hey, she earned it. You ever been around old people? They say something, you're like, I need you to do this right? <laughs> Funny story. She said, she, came, she said, come here, come on, sit beside me. So I sat beside her and she goes, how boy? That's what she calls me. She goes, how boy, how boy? Um, I've been on earth so long. I bet I've got friends and family in heaven that are saying, I wonder if Marie went to the other place. She's not here yet. <laughs> Isn't that great? <sighs> And then she said, oh, 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 but when I step into the pearly gates, you know what people are going to say? They're going to say, what's that smell? That's Estee Lauder. Marie is here because that's my favorite fragrance. <laughs> hey, old people can say anything, right? And I said, you know what? When the Hardys get to heaven, you know what they're going to say? She goes, that's a rowdy bunch. I said, that's exactly what they're going to say. <laughs> what is all that racket? Those are the Hardys coming into the pearly gates, Right? Watch this. At 95, she recognizes that every day is a gift. Every conversation is valuable. Every hug, every kiss means more than it did the last time. You see, when you're young, and I'm looking at some young people, (laughs) anyone under 30, (laughs) listen, listen, when you're young, you think you're bulletproof. And when, I've said it like this, when you have, when you, when you're young, well, when you have, when you, when you have a surplus and you feel like you have a surplus of something, you tend to waste it. 
when I was young, I, 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 I got plenty of time. Now I'm like, the clock's ticking. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, at death's door by any stretch of the imagination. But the conversations take a different tone when you know that Jesus is coming again. Come on, am I helping you today? Yeah, I said, uh, that's why the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. How do, how do you live a wise life? Making the most of every what? Opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. There's never been a better day in history to spread the gospel. Listen, we used to smuggle Bibles into, into uh, uh, areas of the, of the world that it was illegal. We would smuggle. But guess what? We don't have to smuggle just Bibles digitally. We can smuggle an entire Bible school on a flash drive, in an email, in a document. In a, it's never been more excited to be alive and living for God. And I want to take a moment to thank you, church, for making the word of God accessible to all of our missions partners, all of our missions partners. I, 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 I met someone at a pastor's conference a while, uh, a, a few weeks ago, and I'm not going to tell you what country he's, he's from, but it's the 1040 window, right? the latitude, longitude, the 1040 window in a war-torn country. And they said, they smuggled that man in right here to be here because I want... I, I, He's a hero in the faith. He's got a whole movement of churches that are planting out of living rooms underground. Listen, he's got a bounty on his head and he's excited about spreading the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our time. This is our time. Generations before King David built a fixed location for the temple, uh, Moses had a portable church venue. We were portable for three and a half years. Thank you, Jesus. I don't even drive by that school anymore. I get cold sweats when I do. I, I, I don't even say, Lord bless him. I'm like, yeah, get away from me, Satan. Okay. But Moses had it harder because he didn't set up and tear down an auditorium. His church was mobile in a desert. Right? And God calls Moses in Exodus chapter 30, uh, 25 and speaks this to him. This is what it, this is an exciting word today. Tell the people. Notice God told Moses to tell all the people. The people, all of them. The people of Israel to bring me their sac the sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all. Everybody say all. Tell all the people whose hearts are moved to offer them. And this is, where, this is where the issue of generosity always starts. It doesn't start in your wallet. It starts in your heart. It starts when you're moved because you see that God has forgiven you of your sins. He set you free of your yesterdays. It is out of a heart of gratitude. That's where we're first moved. And he goes on to say, and Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, this is the thing that the which the Lord commanded, not if you feel like it, but commanded, take from among you an offering to the Lord. Do you know when you, when you give an offering, it's not to the church, it's through the church to the Lord, right? Whoever is of a willing heart, there it is again, it's not about your wallet, it's about your heart. Let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. But, but here's what I want you to see from the scriptures. L look, at, look at what God said to bring in the funding of the portable temple. Let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze, purple, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair. Goat's hair. How'd you like to be the joker taking up goat's hair in the offering? You know, you got, you're over there looking at, at homeboy with gold, silver, and bronze, and you got goat's hair, ram skins, and dyed red badger skins, right? And acacia wood, oil for the lamps and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Here's what the Lord is saying. Please, church, hear me. <laughs> we can all be generous. So whether you're the person bringing in a wheelbarrow of gold or you're the one 
with fear and trembling out of a grateful heart that brings goat hair and badger skin. God says, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look, look, look what God's not saying. God's not saying socialism, gold, give it to them, and we all give the same. He's like, give God your best. Whatever that looks like, what is your best? Well, I, I don't have gold. What do you have? What, what, what's, what has God trusted you with? And, and, and never, never compare what you have in your hand to someone else's because that devalues the move of God in your life. Why would you do that? What you have is more precious in the eyes of God than you realize. Some of you might be thinking, man, my sacrifice isn't gold. Yeah, but it's your best. This year, this year, we, we had a, a Dream Team banquet, a Dream Team party. We just celebrate the folks that serve on the Dream Team. And, and, and on the back, of the, of the shirts that we gave out, these awesome shirts, had a logo on the back, on the spine, it said together, together. And I gotta be honest with you, I, I, I love that. I, I, I love that, the, the way the team designed that. And I saw that at a, at a high school basketball game in the area, and I'm like, I like that. That's a, that's a great idea because it, it, it promoted camaraderie and team building. And I thought to myself, that is how our church has been able to do all that we've been able to do over the years as far as it concerns generosity is we do it together. It's, generosity is not for an elite few. It is for all of God's people. We were born takers. We were born again givers. Did you know that you never have to teach a toddler the word mine? Isn't that amazing? Like you, you never have to train them. Now, be selfish. Come on, you can do it. It's like they come out of the womb like, Ma! no, you have to teach them to release. You have to teach them to let go. The problem is we got some adults that are like, that's mine. When the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It's all his. It all belongs to him. Release it. Don't give to a church, give through church. I love this African proverb that says this. If you want to run fast, good, then run alone. If you want to run far, run together, together. Never forget, we exist to love God, to know him, to help people get free of their yesterdays, discover their purpose, and to make a difference. We have so many families that are coming that they're, they're, they're born again. They are followers of Jesus Christ. And they are looking in 2022 for a church that believes the Bible, that does not change God's word. That as a spirit-filled church that we can bring our lost friends to and, and our friends that are looking for a safe place for their family that honors God's word. And you know what? We want to say to you, welcome home. We're not changing. We will always be generous and we always will, will always partner with God's word. If we read something that we don't like, we don't change the Bible. We let the Bible change us. And I know, I know you're thinking, well, that's kind of common. You're going to be surprised. And I'm going to say this prophetically. You're going to be surprised over the next decade, churches that fall away from that. This will not be one. This will not be one. This is a Bible believing, spirit filled Spirit-led, generous church. And I'm thankful for it because I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the presence of God. Um, um, together, that's how we're gonna make space for all these new families that are looking for a safe place. And we're also making room for people that do not know God, but they know that what the world gave them left them lacking. There's still a void in their heart. They know that Jesus is gotta be the answer because the world and all its riches, it just didn't do, it did not do the trick. Um, we're expanding our facilities and this is not a bait and switch. I just wanna give you a little update on all the exciting things that are going on behind closed doors that you may not be a part of. I wanna let you in the room right now. Um, you've been so patient with, with uh, me and the, the board of trustees. Uh, we've worked with architects, with the plans. We've been so busy um, um, behind the scenes 
uh, with specific designs for the future of of the building of, of the next generation facility for ministry space that will be attached to this building. We're not moving anywhere. We're, we're expanding this current facility. It'll triple the size of our kids' ministry space, everybody. Come on. Kids and teenagers. Kids and teenagers. We have commission and architectural engineer, and they are working on the entire site plans of the property that we own. And uh, we, we, we didn't want to bring you pics of the building footprint until we knew that there would be no changes to those plans. All right. And so we're going to show you those in the future, exactly what the blueprints look like. But, but the trustees uh, and I, we, we feel comfortable showing a street view, a street view of, of your, your building for your kids to minister to the next generation. Can you put that picture up right now? This is what's coming to serve our city. Come on. This is amazing. That's right. Come on, this is exciting. We were able to do this in a pandemic. Only God, only God, only God, all right? And, and how in the world were we able to do that? i tell you how, 100% participation. Together, together, we can change the world. And bless God, the world can start in our backyard. Let this be the place that we send out missionaries and we're able to help the local, uh, 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 the community that we live in, plant churches around the United States and then reach the, the world with, with the gospel. Uh, we, we started a generosity initiative back in 2019 in October and we finished out uh, last year, 2021. And even in a global pandemic, are you ready? We, we, were to, we were able to reach over 80% of our, of our commitments. Isn't that amazing? In the middle of a pandemic. So that's why we're, we're, we're moving forward and we're just trying to be good stewards of God's resources. And I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful for the generosity, not just for the last two years, but for the last 15 years. I'm thankful for the generosity that you guys are saying, you know what? I want more of God. I want, to, I want to disciple my family. I want to grow in my relationships with the Lord. I want to grow in my friendships within the church. And that can happen here at Highlands Church. Psalm 133, I'll finish with this scripture. How wonderful and pleasant it is when God's people live together in, come on, in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing. Where, where, where is there? There is the place of together. There is the place of unity. If we can just get in unity, guess what? God will command his blessings upon our lives. Y'all want the blessings of the Lord? I know I do too. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is how we're gonna make a big financial impact together. This is how we're gonna help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference together. And we are doing it and we will continue to do it. Heavenly Father, thank you for your consistent love. Thank you for your consistent pouring out of your grace and your mercy, your unmerited favor. I look back over the years and never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. You said, we shall not want. And Lord, you've always supplied our need. So God, as we exit the school year, as we enter this fun summer season, I pray your blessing upon every single person under the sound of my voice. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord establish you. May his countenance be upon you. <laughs> and may God give you his peace. God, we know that every good and perfect gift comes down from you and we love you in Jesus name let's all stand to our feet put our hands together and thank God for what he's done today come on